introduced Job. And we see that he was a man of complete integrity. Or maybe some of your versions said that he was a righteous man. Does anybody know what that means? That he was a man of integrity or that he was righteous? Anybody know what those words mean? Okay, we're going to look into that. Um, It means that he was a good person. He did what was morally right. So he followed the laws and he stayed away from evil. Okay? So he made good choices in life. He was following God, right? And he stayed away from things that were bad. So we learn that he's a follower of God. He's a good man. And then we see that he's the richest man in the area. He's got 10 kids and he's got thousands of animals, which means he was really wealthy. And those animals probably made him money as well. So Job is doing really well in life, right? When we jump into the story, he's living the good life, right? But Job doesn't realize as he's going on in his great life with his kids and his animals and his money, um, that there's a bigger story going on beyond what he can understand, okay? And so we're going to jump down to verse 6. And we're going to kind of see what's going on beyond what Job knows is happening. So starting in verse 6, it says, One day the members of the heavenly court came to present themselves before the Lord. So basically, we, we, we probably understand that that is angels. And so the angels are meeting with God. Okay? It's kind of crazy meeting to think about. And the accuser, Satan, came with them. Where have you come from? The Lord asked Satan. Satan answered the Lord. I have been patrolling the earth, watching everything that's going on. Then the Lord asked Satan, have you noticed my servant Job? He is the finest man in all the earth. He is blameless, a man of complete integrity. He fears God and stays away from evil. Satan replied to the Lord, yes, but Job is Um, has a good reason to fear God. You have always put a wall of protection around him and his home and his property. You have made him prosper in everything that he does. Look how rich he is. But if you reach out and take away everything that Job has, he will surely curse you to your face. So we're going to stop there. So God and his angels are having a meeting and Satan shows up which is super crazy, and we, cannot, we can wonder a lot of questions of how that even happened, okay? But the Bible says that it happened. And God says, man, Satan, like, where have you been? And we know, right, from learning about what happened back in Genesis that Satan was sent here to earth. And so Satan says that he has been patrolling the earth, looking around at what's going on, and God points out Job to Satan, Now, to me, this doesn't make any sense. And I'm sure it didn't make any sense to Job either. But that would be like, I want you guys to think about this. That would be like a robber coming into a a jewelry store, okay? And the robber's there and, you know, he's looking at what he can get. And he's just looking around at all the jewelry. And then he goes back to the back office where the owner of the jewelry shop works, right? And he goes back there and the owner's like, hey, man. He knows it's a robber. He's like, man, what you been doing? And the robber's like, I've just been looking at all your stuff out there, seeing what you got. And that would be like the owner saying, hey, did you see my biggest, most precious diamond? It's right in the front. It's right in the front cabinet. Did you see it out there? Like that doesn't make sense to us, right? Why would he do that? Why would God point out Job to Satan? It seems crazy if you think about it. But we know and Job knows that God is sovereign. And that's a big word, and we're actually going to talk about that word later. But basically, it means that he, God is in control of everything. So what we can assume um, in this passage is that God must be up to something, and he's setting Satan up. If he's willing to, to tell Satan about Job, he must be setting Satan up for something. Um, 
So Satan believes that the only reason Job is following and praising God is because he has everything he wants and everything he needs in life. So, jo- so Satan's like, why wouldn't Job honor you? He's got everything he needs. He doesn't need anything else in life. And God says, okay, jo- or Satan, I'm going to allow you to take things away from Job. Because God says, I don't believe, he doesn't believe Satan that that's the only reason Job is honoring him. So we're not going to actually read the verses, but I'm going to tell you what happens in the next following verses. Job is just minding his own business, living his, you know, his good life with his 10 kids and his thousands of animals. And one day a messenger comes up to him. And the messenger tells him that a group of people have come and stolen all of his oxen and all of his donkeys and killed all of the farmers and servants that were with them. So in a second, he finds out all of, the, all of his oxen's, oxen and donkeys are gone. Now, before that messenger even leaves, a second messenger comes to Job and he finds out that a fire has come and burned up all of his sheep and all of his shepherds. So Job's got to be like, dude, what is going on? First I lose my, lose my oxen, and now my donkeys, and my sheep, and my farmers, and my shepherds. Like, what in the world? And then a third messenger shows up on the scene. And he tells him that a group of raiders showed up and stole all of his camels. And at the same time killed the rest of his servants. So in a matter of minutes, Job finds out that all of his animals are gone and all of his servants are gone. Which that would be the mo- probably the most of his wealth is just gone. Nothing he can do about it. And if that's not bad enough, a fourth messenger comes to Job and tells him that all 10 of his children were at one of the kids' house. They were having a feast together when a strong wind came and blew down the walls of the house that they were all in and crushed them. They all died. So talk about a bad day. You find out that all your animals are gone, all your servants are gone, and all 10 of your children are gone. That's a bad day. How would you react if that happened to you. Now, most of you probably don't have 10 kids or thousands of animals. But if you find out your family, your closest friends, your closest relatives, your, your most prized possessions, all in a matter of minutes are gone, how would you react in that moment? I just want you to think about that. But let's jump into the Bible and see how Job reacts. So go down to verse 20. It says, Job stood up, tore his robe in grief, and shaved his head, and he fell to the ground and worshiped. He said, I came naked from my mother's womb, and I will be naked when I leave. The Lord gave me what I had, and the Lord has taken it away. Praise the name of the Lord. In all of this, Job did not sin by blaming God. So how did Job react? He reacted by worshiping. He didn't get angry at God. He didn't blame God. He chose to trust God and worship him. That would be really hard to do in that situation. So a couple verses down, we see that Satan and God have another meeting, okay? Because the first time Satan was defeated, right? God was right. All of Job's possessions were taken and he still honored God. So Satan and God have another meeting and Satan's like, okay, God, I think that if you take away Job's health, then he will curse you. And so God allows Satan to bring boils onto Job. And I don't know if, You guys really know what boils are, but Job's entire body were covered in these open sores. 
They were probably pussy and disgusting. And some of the things that I read about this story talked about that they probably got dirt in them and eventually worms. Can you imagine how disgusting and how painful that would be? It was so gross that he couldn't even touch it with his bare hands. So he took broken pieces of pottery and scraped away at his boils. Can you imagine? Just thinking about that gives me like the heebie-jeebies, okay? So right after this, Job's wife steps in. She's got something to say. So skip down to Job 2, verses 9 and 10. So first, all of these things are taken from him. His children die. Then he's stricken with these terrible, nasty, disgusting boils. And then in verse 9, his wife said to him, Are you still trying to maintain your integrity? Curse God and die. But Job replied, You talk like a foolish woman. Should we only accept good things from the hand of God and never anything bad? So in all of this, Job still did nothing wrong. He didn't turn away from God. He didn't blame God. He's probably wondering why all this is happening. And he was probably in a lot of pain. But he still chose to trust and to honor God. So if you read on in the book of Job, for about the next 27 chapters, Um, Some of Job's friends come on the scene. They find out everything that had happened with Job, and they try to give him some advice, but they give him a mix of advice. Some of it's kind of good, but most of it's not really good advice. And they're basically saying to Job, dude, you must have sinned. You must have done something really bad for this to happen to you. But Job still does not blame God, does not turn away from God. And they don't realize, these friends don't realize that God is doing this not only to test Job, but also to help Job grow. And he's using this as a situation for him to show his glory through Job. So after the friends talk for about 27 verses, they go back and forth with um, Job about what's going on. God steps in, and God's got something to say. Okay, so turn um, in your Bibles um, a few chapters to Job 38. (laughs) Actually, quite a few chapters. So Job never questions whether, whether God is in control, but he does start to question why these things are happening. So we're just gonna read a little bit, um, a few verses in Job 38 when God steps in and starts to talk to Job. Now picture this too. God is speaking to him from a whirlwind, like a, kind of like a storm probably, okay? Can you imagine how intimidating that is? Like God's talking to you like through a tornado or something crazy. Okay, that's freaky, okay? So verse one, chapter 38, verse one. It says, then the Lord answered Job from the whirlwind. Who is this that questions my wisdom with such ignorant words? Brace yourself like a man because I have some questions for you and you must answer them. Whoa, God's got some questions, okay? Where were you when I laid the foundations of this earth? Tell me if you know so much. Who determined its dimensions and stretched out the surveying line? What supports its foundations and who laid its cornerstone? So we're going to stop there, but if you read on, um, it goes on for four chapters where God is questioning Job, basically saying, where were you when I made this earth? Did you create the wind and the rain and the hail? Did you create all the animals? Who do you think you are? Do you think you know better than I do? I want you guys to think about that. When you're going through something hard and it doesn't make sense and you think you have a better answer, do you think you know better than God? It's not an easy thing to think through. But God's getting Job to think through the fact that he created everything and he knows everything about everything. So it's a pretty intense place to stop in the story, but we're gonna stop and we're gonna go outside 
we're going to do something a little crazy and then we're going to come in and um, talk about it and finish up some lessons that we can learn through this. So I want you to leave everything you have right where you are. Wait, wait, don't stand up. I'm going to explain some rules first. You're going to leave everything you have right where it is. Okay, we're going to go outside. We're only going to be out there a couple of minutes and we're going to come back inside. If I could have Graham and Kara, and if you could grab Austin from back there, go ahead and go out there. And if I could have, um, let's see, Alan and, Car and Carla help me. What we're going to do is we're going to go outside. It's going to be super crazy. We are going to, hey guys, I need you to pay attention so you know what to do. We can, we can make this quick. We're going to go outside and we are going to have a chicken race. So we're going to go outside and you guys are going to make two lines. Wait, 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 listen, listen, listen. I got to explain it first. You're going to make two lines. So there's a set of cones down here and there's a fence down here. And you're going to make lines going this way. So I need a line here and a line here, okay? And the chickens are going to race in between you, okay? Don't worry, the chickens won't hurt you. They won't come at you, okay? But before we start the race, there's going to be three chickens. And they all look a little bit different. And in your mind, I want you to pick a chicken that you want to win the race, okay? Whether it, maybe you like the color of its feathers or maybe you think it's the biggest, so it's the best. And when we put the chickens down... Okay, they're going to race from the cones to the fence. And I want you guys to cheer on your chicken, the one that you want to win. Okay, you got it? Okay, so we're going to go out there and you guys are going to make lines. Did the chickens have any idea that they were in a race? No. no, obviously not, right? Because they went crazy. One's on the roof, okay? <laughs> so the fact that the chickens were in a race was beyond their sphere of understanding. They had no way of understanding that they were in a race, that there were 40 crazy middle schoolers cheering them on. Y'all probably scared them. That's why they went crazy. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it was my idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's crazy. I like to do crazy things every once in a while. That's all right. I grabbed a chicken by its tail, and, and it was like, ah! and it freaked out. Okay. So, that was an illustration to show the point that a lot of times in our life, there's a bigger picture going on. God has a bigger plan, and we don't always realize what we're doing. We don't always realize that we're in a race. The chickens had no idea. They were just going about their normal life, eating their food. They didn't know that there was a huge race going on around them right? So when we go through different things in our life, whether it's good or bad, a lot of times there's a bigger story. Hey boys, can I have your attention? There's a bigger story going on around us that we don't even understand. So on your note sheet, we're going to go through a few things that we can learn through the life of Job. And I challenge you because we stopped at a pretty crazy part in the story of Job where God comes in and he's talking to Job and he says, I got a lot of questions for you, okay? Where were you when, you, when I laid the foundations of this earth? But I challenge you to go and read the end of the book of Job, read the rest of the story because some more crazy things happen in the life of Job and it's pretty cool to hear the rest of the story. So I challenge you to go home and read that but we're not gonna focus on the end of the story right now. So the first thing in your notes is that everyone suffers at different times in your life. It's not a question of whether you're gonna go through hard times or you're not gonna go through hard times. Everybody's gonna go through something hard in their life. Now there's different um, levels of that, okay? Some people have a lot harder things than others, but everyone suffers in different times in their life. The second thing I'm going to teach you, you hear the chicken? Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. The chicken's going crazy. I'm going to have to buy Jerry a new chicken. Okay. The, no, they're Kara's. Okay, the second thing. I'm going to teach you a new word. I learned a new vocab word when I was doing this lesson. God desires to be paramount in the heart of his people. So the word is paramount, P-A-R-A-M-O-U-N-T. 
And what paramount means right below that is the most important thing above anything else or supreme. So God desires to be the most, hey boys, the most important thing. (laughs) Oh, poor chicken, don't die. God desires to be the most important thing in our life. So if everything, hey, listen up. I know it's hard to focus with crazy chickens, but we got to finish. If everything else is stripped from your life, if you lose your most prized possessions, if someone close to you dies, are you going to turn from God and blame him? Or are you going to choose to trust that he has a bigger plan and that he is in control? Because he desires to be paramount. He desires to be the top thing in our life. So when everything else is taken from us, we can still turn to him. The third thing is that we should worship and honor God in every circumstance. What was Job's first thing that he did when he found out he had lost everything? He tore his clothes and he worshiped. So he grieved. He was very sad. And that's okay to have those emotions. But he worshiped God even in that moment. And sometimes that doesn't make logical sense to us. But if we go back to the the second thing, he desires to be the top thing in our life. The fourth thing is that when we don't understand why things are happening, we must fall back on faith. Now, faith is the next blank also, is a complete trust or confidence in someone or something. So faith means trusting God even when you don't understand, even when life sucks. You have to fall back on faith, just complete trust in him. And number five, God is sovereign. You guys are learning all kinds of new words tonight. Sovereign. S-O-V-E-R-E-I-G-N. And the next line is sovereign as as well. And that means he is a supreme ruler possessing ultimate power. So I want you guys to think about this. God created everything and he knows everything about everything, which is way beyond our sphere of understanding. So our job in life is to honor him, to worship him, to do what he asks us to do, to run the race, right? Even if we don't understand the bigger picture, like the chickens had no idea what was going on around them, man. They had no idea. They didn't know what crazy people were chasing them either. We don't always understand what's going on in life. Thanks, Kara. You the bomb. Yay. The chickens are all safe in, in their little cage. So... I want you guys to think about these things, okay? When you go through something hard, what is your first reaction? Yeah, it should be. It should be to worship, to honor God. He desires to be paramount in your life, the number one top thing in your life, even if everything else is taken away. And he is sovereign. He's in control. He's got a bigger picture, a bigger plan beyond what we can understand. Now, some of this message probably made you really think about some things, and maybe even as you think about it later, you're going to have all kinds of questions about maybe the life of Job or, or God and the character of God. And I challenge you to read the rest of the book of Job. And if you have questions, if you're like, I don't understand, or this all just seems crazy, the chickens got me all confused, whatever, come talk to me. Come talk to some of the other leaders, because I would love to process through you, this with you. I don't understand it all either right? We just have to fall back on faith. So I'm going to pray. 
and then we're free to go. I'm really hot, so we, you can get a drink or um, put your Bibles and stuff away, and then we're going to have worship. We're going to have high school come in and join us. So let's pray.